Live from the Bay Area's news station, this is the Cron 4 Morning News. <laughs> Try to be clever. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to our two live hours of Cron 4 News Weekend. We have so much good advice for you today that by the end of this program, your life is going to be tremendously improved. Okay. That's all I have to say. Oh. No, actually, <laughs> we've got advice on how to stay young. And by the way, among the ways to do that is to stay intimate and uh, continue to stimulate your mind where well, you kind of knew that and keep your inner child alive. We well, Henry's uh, looking at a book with a large wrinkled elephant on its cover, and I'm wondering where he's going with that. <laughs> yes. You say your elephant looks like this, folks. <laughs> you say you look like this. <laughs> well, here's an interesting statistic. A thousand people an hour are turning 65 in the United States these days, which I suppose is better than the alternative. But how are you going to cope? Because it ain't, it's going to happen to all of us that are lucky enough to get there. We're going to talk to an expert, a clinical gerontologist, who has some excellent advice on what he's learned, not from books, but from the people who have actually made it to getting old being happy. That's coming up on Cron 4 News Weekend. Welcome back to Cron 4 News Weekend. There are lots of books out there about getting old and how to deal with getting old. Uh, most of the information uh, comes from various kinds of book learning and studies and things like that. Uh, our next guest is a clinical gerontologist who has uh, done his learning from the people who do not act their age. Uh, his name is Eric Shapira, and the book is called A New Wrinkle, uh, which is what I learned from older people who never acted their age. Uh, Dr. Shapira is now a clinical gerontologist. Actually, he was, he was a dentist who went through kind of a tough time and just did a complete career change. That's right. Uh, what happened? I had a neck injury that uh, forced me to stop practicing. I had several surgeries on my neck, and uh, I had to change uh, caregiving jobs, if you will, professions. Yeah. Um, so today, uh, you deal with your a, what you call an aging mentor, I believe, in addition to being a clinical gerontologist. Yes. Um, what kinds of elements have you learned from folks that you've studied? Uh, you talk about the inner child. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, we tend to suppress that nascent curiosity that we have when we're children and that ability to be um, free and uh, to enjoy life, so to speak. We're regimented as we grow older by the mores of society, which is a good thing because we'd have organized chaos if we didn't. Right. And uh, I think we need to go back and tap into that little nymph, if you will, that little imp inside of us to enjoy life, to enjoy each day because that's all we have. But people, one of the things that seems to happen is people seem to get kind of grumpy and forget that you can still be a child. I mean, I have people saying to me all the time, act your age. Uh, and, and I tell them I hope not. But people do tend to think that they have to have some dignity and they, and they have to somehow have a little... What is it? They just get inured to life? I don't know. Why aren't people more excited? I think we're under a great deal of stress and strain in our society today. And I think people are caught up in that. And I think they have to st step back from it and uh, appreciate what they have. Okay, so what kind of exercise? How do you, how do you get someone to touch their inner child? Well, I talk, to, I talk with them, first of all. I find out where they're at. I find out what's bothering them about where they're, what, what age they're in, at that state of mind that they're in, so to speak. And I tell them that, you know, age is mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, I think it's important to realize it's just a number. Uh, we're all aging. We're all related in that sense. And being old is a state of mind. It's a choice. Uh, you talk about staying social, which I, I guess is kind of obvious if you're going to start hanging around sure. at home. Uh, but a lot of people, as they get older, they don't want to be social anymore. I mean, there's a lot of chicken and egg problems here, of cause course. and effect problems of course. here. And how do, you, how do you interrupt that? I think it's important to, to let people know that they have a lot to give. Uh, we're forgetting that there's a great uh, amount of wisdom in older people, our elders. And I think that... Uh, we don't know what we what gifts we have until we give them away. I encourage people to go out and volunteer and to and to help other people. Uh, we all, as we get older, suffer more aches and pains, and I think that becomes paralyzing to many of us. You're in chronic pain yes. as a result of this problem that you had, this neck injury that you suffered. How do you overcome that, the chronic pain that older people have to actually get out there and do things and not just become susceptible to that? Well, you create. You be creative. I have a 98-year-old client who is crippled with arthritis. Her hands are all gnarled and knotty, and uh, she knits and crochets and spends a lot of time in her garden. She grows all her own vegetables and she gives them away to neighbors and it gives her some peace of mind. And I think you just have to get out there and do it. You have to keep moving. Uh, you talk about 
continuing to be intimate, and I don't know if that's specifically sexual, but what do you mean by well, that? Well, there's lots of ways to be intimate. I, I defined it in the book as into me see, and it's, it's sharing yourself with others. Our most intimate form of communication is touch. So we became intimate this morning by shaking hands, and I think uh, we need to hug each other every day. You need at least 10 hugs to be uh, satisfied, so to speak, but there's different forms of intimacy. Communication is, uh, is another one as well. Well, one of the hardest things is that uh, as you get older, if you're lucky enough to still have a partner, you know, uh, in older life, sometimes their problems end up being your problems or their decline ends up leading to your decline or it's even just harder to be intimate by which I mean even touching somebody who seems to have you're losing that person in yes uh, I see a lot of people uh, going to the dating services after a divorce or a death in, uh, of a spouse and uh, finding another partner finding people to be with to go out with not necessarily marry them but to to be with people mm -hmm. it's very important so you're a proponent of using online dating services I for think it works folks. but I think they have to be very careful uh, it's hard to make choices about people you don't really know and, and those things help us get to know people. And how do you deal with the declining partner uh, who's affecting you? How do you, how do you support them and keep from having That's yourself That's very difficult. You need respite. I think it's important to have respite from being a caregiver uh, if you're a constant caregiver. And I also think in this book I wrote 10 stages of intimacy with a, with a compromised spouse and uh, there's nothing out there like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's I thought that was a very interesting support. Chapter. Okay. Uh, it's called A New Wrinkle, What I Learned from Older People Who Never Acted Their Age, uh, and presumably have fewer wrinkles than that, uh, Dr. Eric Shapira. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Henry, for having me. Uh, Marty and Isabel, two folks who will never grow old. No wrinkles. I, I love what you said, Doctor. It's all a state of mind. Age <laughs> is just a state of mind. Thank, Thank you. you.